Hey guys, welcome to the video today. Um, today I'm going to be going over inverse trig functions and how to use those inverse trig functions for um, uh, solving you know problems that I have right here on this uh, on this uh, PowerPoint slide. And um, we're going to be using the unit circle, and we have to remember those those uh, range restrictions that I talked about in part one of the inverse trig functions video. So if you have a chance and you haven't gone over that, go back, take a look at those range restrictions. I'm going to um, I'm going to refer to them in this video, but you might want to go back to see how exactly we got those. So um, so let's let's start going. Let's get going here. Um, notice here I have the unit circle out. And one of the things that, that I like to do first when you're looking at the unit circle, when you're dealing with these um, these inverse functions, you want to to make sure that, that these angles here, you want to maybe change them to negative pi over 6, negative pi over 4, and negative pi over 3, and negative pi over 2. That way, uh, you notice that they're just right across. They're opposite from one another because you're going to need those for when you're dealing with sine, tangent, and cosecant, the inverses of those. So uh, we're going to mark here that between um, 0 and pi, so in these two quadrants up here, quadrant 1 and 2, this is where we're going to look for inverse cosine, inverse cotangent, and inverse secant. And between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, these two right here is where I'm going to be looking at for inverse sine, inverse tangent, and inverse cosecant. All right, so keep that in mind. That's where you want to look for for your um, your your sides, okay, your coordinates, um, and then give the answer in radians. So let's take a look at a. a, a We've got about nine examples here. Hopefully, they'll make sense as you keep working on them. Um, you know, it's practice, practice, practice with some of these. So uh, here we go. We've got sine inverse of root 3 over 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on the unit circle, locate just in this green part where, because we're dealing with inverse sine, where is root 3 over 2 going to be? Well, sine is the y-coordinate. So we're looking for the y-coordinate of negative of root 3 over 2 we're gonna look here there it is and so right here is my angle so that's gonna be pi over 3 and that's my answer boom done so we're gonna look at the the next one now this one is using cosine inverse cosine now inverse cosine is our x value so we're looking for our x value now we're gonna restrict ourselves between 0 and pi so quadrants 1 and 2 so here we go. Well, let's look for a x value of negative one half, right here. There we go. So our angle here is two pi over three. So our answer is two pi over three. Bada bing, done. Okay, that's all we're looking for. Let's try the last one. Inverse sine. So inverse sine, guys. The inverse sine is right in here. So we're going to only look at these two. Negative one half. We're looking for the y coordinate. Okay, so y coordinate is sine. So where's the y coordinate? Negative one half. Oh, there we go. Right there. It's not eleven pi over six. Okay, because we're going from negative pi over two to pi over two. So the answer to this is negative pi over six. Negative pi over six. So we've got to. That's why we got to use those negative angles. Uh, notice here that the third quadrant is not even used, so you know we just don't even worry about that one for now for these inverse functions. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple more here. Uh, we did sine, cosine. Let's do tangent and cotangent. So tangent, remember, um, let's let's mark these guys up here, right? Um, okay. So here, okay, between here and here, this is going to be cotangent inverse. And between here and here, all right, is going to be tangent inverse. So let's go ahead and 
see what we got. We got inverse tangent here. So let's uh, inverse tangent. We're going to restrict ourselves here. Well, these are a little bit different now because um, we actually need, we know that tangent is the sine over the cosine. So we're talking about the y over the x. So I want to find a y coordinate over the x coordinate that gives me root 3. So in order to do that, um, let's see, this is probably going to need to be root 3 over 2 over 1 half, right? Because so my y coordinate is going to be root 3 over 2. My x coordinate is going to be 1 half. So when I simplify this, I get root 3. So uh, negative, one of them is going to be negative. This is all positive. These are one of them is negative. So it's got to be down here. My y coordinate, negative root 3 over 2, positive 1 half. The coordinate is 5 pi over 3. No, it's not. Remember, this is negative pi over 3. Okay, so, it's, so the answer is negative pi over 3. Right, don't fall for that trick. Don't fall for that. All right, let's do cotangent. Now, cotangent is on the other side. So we're looking at 0 and to pi. Same rules apply here, except cotangent is x over y. So what two fractions are going to or what two coordinates here are going to give me root 3 over 3? Well, uh, if we were to simplify that, um, this actually is, you know, it's kind of like the reciprocal of that. So we're going to go 1 half over root 3 over 2. So we're looking for an x of 1 half and a y of root 3 over 2, negative. So we're over here, x of 1 half, y of root 3 over 2, bam, right there, 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3. Done. Okay? So we've got to make sure that we look at these x and y's and make sure we, we get them to, to this right here. Um, sometimes I encourage my students to practice simplifying these fractions so that you can see what those fractions look like and the ones that are most common. Last one. Try it on your own. Pause. Okay, now you're back. Um, negative 1, that's going to be root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, right? Because it's got to be the y over the x. We're dealing with tangent. So the y over the x, and there it's negative, so one of them's got to be negative. It's got to be down here. 7 pi over 4. No! Nah! Wrong again. Negative pi over 4. All right, make sure you don't forget that, guys. Okay, we got to go negative right there. All right, so uh, let's take a look at a few more. We did sine, cosine, we did inverse tangent, we did inverse cotangent. Let's look at inverse secant and inverse cosecant. So again, cosecant is here. Oops, 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 go back. Cosecant, inverse is there. Sine, I'm sorry, cosecant is here, inverse secant. That's what we're looking for. We're doing inverse secant. Now with the secant and cosecant, it's one over this. So the easiest thing to do is just take the reciprocal of what's in this, and then that's going to give you what coordinate you're looking for. Okay, so the reciprocal of two is one half. So we're looking for secant is, remember that secant is one over cosine. So we're looking for a um, y value so we're looking for the reciprocal of the y value. So we're looking for a y value of 1 half in here. Okay, 1 over 1 half. All right, so where is that? Um, negative 1 half. So the y value, I'm sorry, the x value. What am I saying? X value. X value, guys. Come on, x value. It's the x value. X value is 1 half. It right, wow. It keeps being the same one. Negative 1 half. Right there at 2 pi over 3. Okay, let's take the reciprocal of this. We're going to get 3 over 2 root 3. We've got to simplify this, so multiply both by root 3. And I'm going to get uh, 3 root 3 over 2 times 3. And it's going to cancel out, and I'm going to get root 3 over 2. Ah, so I'm looking for cosecant. Now, cosecant is 1 over sine, right? Sine is the y coordinate so i'm looking for a y coordinate of root 3 over 2 in here right oh i used the wrong color i used the wrong color it's green it's cosecant cosecant's here okay so root 3 over 2 here where's root 3 over 2 here for a y coordinate negative okay so we got to have a negative 
negative y coordinate, negative y coordinate, negative y coordinate, right there. Oh, we got a different one. Not 5 pi over 3, negative pi over 3. So our answer here is negative pi over 3. All right, last one here. Whoa, what is that? Sine inverse cosine? Don't sweat it, guys. All you got to do is do the inside first and then apply the sign to whatever you get inside. So let's do the inside first. The inside, we're looking for the x value. And this is a cosine, so we're looking here, right? The x value of negative 1 half is right here at 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3. So the inverse cosine of negative 1 half is 2 pi over 3. Now we look for the sine of 2 pi over 3. The sine of 2 pi over 3 is going to be, there's the bell. But you know what? I'm almost done. This is the end. The answer is root 3 over 2. Boom. Done. Now, I don't have any practice problems. Hopefully, you had some time to pause this and look through them. Um, if you want, um, just message me I can, uh, or do some comments, and I can uh, send you some practice problems. But uh, hopefully, you have a, a textbook or something you can look at the practice problems. If you have uh, my purple paper, the worksheet that we worked in class, you could try some of them out now that you looked over the video. So there you go, guys. Using inverse trig functions, using the unit circle to, to calculate these inverse trig functions. I'm done. I'm out. Thanks for joining me.